welcome back to another video on the Enchanted Basin. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenny. It is very nice to meet you. I like to do videos that are Halloween or witchy oriented, vegan taste tests, craft with me videos, and chronic illness awareness chats. Shout out to all my fellow spooky spoonies. Today's video is very long overdue, friends. I actually filmed the sewing portion of this video probably two months ago, and I just haven't gotten around to doing an intro and then an actual showing of the final product. Also, here's my living room. If you guys aren't, you aren't used to seeing the mantle view of this, I just thought this would be the easiest way for me to show you the finished product. Today, I'm showing you how to sew an apron. It's very easy. I, I have some fabric that was greatly gifted to me by um, one of my patrons. Lisa, thank you so very much. I'm excited. Sorry it's taken me so long to get this posted. I'm excited to share this process with you guys. It was actually really, really easy and I'm, I'm going to use the fabric itself for a template to make more aprons that I'm hoping to post on my Etsy. So I've got lots of really fun spooky fabrics that I'm hoping to, to get working with. It's been a while, I really need to. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Also, like I said, here's the mantle. I still have like my summery stuff up, but um, I'm really excited to start decorating soon. I think I'm gonna decorate much earlier than I did last year. Last year, goodness, I feel like I didn't put out Halloween until like, what was it, early October? Which for me is very, very late. I normally put out Halloween decor, I would say probably a little bit after my birthday, which, was last week. So I usually try to do early September, get all the Halloween out because that way I get several months to really, really enjoy it. I'm just really excited to get it going. And I have most of the stuff I've been looking for this year. Um, we've had really amazing luck. If you've been following me on all my decor hunting videos, you've seen I've had some amazing luck finding really, really nice retro-y kind of pieces. So I'm really excited for how this is gonna turn out. I have chatted long enough, jibber jabbered long enough. So let's just go ahead and get into the sewing process. Take it, crafting Jenny. All right, so we're gonna do the sewing part now. I have the fabric laid out here on my dining room table. I'm just gonna cut out all of the pieces. I'm gonna do both the original regular fabric. I'm also going to be using for the backside, like the lining, I'm just using black. Um, this is broadcloth, so super cheap. I figured for something like this, I didn't need anything super fancy. You could do like a thicker material if you want something a little bit stiffer. For me, this is what I'm gonna do, just cause this is kind of like a trial run. I am hoping to do more of these designs and put them on my Etsy page, but this is kind of <laughs> my initial go with it. So I'm hoping it works out. And I didn't want to do anything too expensive, not knowing how it was gonna work out. Cut out all these and cut out the ties. So let's get to choppy. Choppy, no, not chopping. <laughs> Let's get to cutting. <laughs> angles. <laughs> Hi there. Okay, so everything is cut out. I have the front fabric and the back fabric. All the different little strips. So for these, you don't need a, a lining because what we're going to do is just fold them over so they're going to be a little bit thinner. So they won't, they won't need a lining because you won't see the inside of it. If you wanted to make this a little bit easier, maybe a little bit cleaner cuts, Rather than just using fabric scissors, you could use a rotary. If you use a rotary cutter, make sure you're using a cutting mat. Um, something like this, it might not have to be quite this big, but if you're gonna do that, because otherwise you will cut up your table. So make sure you, know, you have one of these underneath your fabric before you cut with one of these. And I would say, especially if you're not like trying to follow a pattern like this, you just have a fabric that has continuous pattern, if that makes sense. Um, I think using a rotary in this will be much easier and just make a lot more sense. But for this, because I wanted to try and make sure I was really cutting right at the fabric, I did leave about an eighth an inch or so of edging on all of the bands as well as the main apron fabric because I wanna leave a little bit area to 
turn it over and make sure we can do our hem. So allow that little bit of allowance if you're doing like your own thing. Now what I'm gonna do, I need to, if you're like me and you didn't follow the directions or just weren't prepared for doing this project, go ahead and iron them. I'm gonna get out my ironing board and make sure everything is really, really nice and smooth. So that way when we sew it, there's no little bumps or little kinks in it. It'll be a nice clean line and you're not gonna have anything all wrinkly. Let me get all that out and let's, let's get to ironing. With this, one thing I'll note, make sure you pay attention to what kind of fabric you're using so that you'll know exactly what setting to use on your iron. That goes for like any sewing project. You wanna be careful. You're not gonna iron something that's actually gonna be destroyed by being ironed. Something like fleece. Probably not making a fleece apron, but just saying, if you're making anything with fleece, you probably don't wanna iron it because uh, I might burn it. So just be careful. Pay attention to what setting you're using. All right, so now we're actually ready to sew. I got everything nice and ironed. <laughs> oh, my brain just, just stops sometimes. Ever happen to you guys? You're middle of a sentence or just doing anything and then you realize, wait, what? What was I talking about? What was I doing? Yes, brain frog, brain frog, brain fog is real, my friend. So now that I got everything nice and ironed, what am I do? For the strips, you're gonna fold them right sides together and then you're gonna sew down this one edge and then all the way down the, I don't know, the actual edges. Sew them down together with a fourth inch seam allowance. Leave this end open so that you can turn it inside out. Right side out? Right side out. <laughs> I'm gonna actually iron these, just press it down so I have a nice clean edge right there and it keeps these together, makes it a little bit easier while I'm sewing. So I'm gonna do that and get all of these sewn. All right, with this, I am just using some black thread. I figure it'll match the fabric well enough. I am, like I said, doing a fourth of an inch seam allowance for this. And then I'm also gonna be doing, I think I'm just gonna do a straight stitch because um, there's really no need for a zigzag. This is not stretchy material. So I think straight stitch should be absolutely fine. So let's get to it. Make sure again, do some, since we're doing a straight stitch, make sure definitely do back stitch just to kind of help lock in those initial stitches. Okay, so I've got all of these strips sewn. Now what I'm gonna do is turn them right side out. I've tried a couple different ways. <laughs> I've got two of these already turned. One I poked through with it. I used a, there's like this little hook thing. You actually use this for pulling elastic or fabric through beads. That worked okay, but the metal point on this poked through the fabric. I also was trying to find like a big boba straw. I know I have one somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Cause there's ones where you can do it if you have like a bigger boba straw. This is just one from a plastic tumbler I was trying to use. It wasn't quite wide enough. And then you can take like something like a chopstick and you can push the fabric through it that way. But what I ended up doing, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? I've already forgotten. I literally figured this out like two minutes ago. I'm telling you brain frog. Brain bug, brain frog. It's just brain frog at this point. That's just what, that's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm sorry, this is a whole mess, isn't it? So what you do, you have this, you're gonna take your straw, put your straw inside the fabric. You're just gonna like push the tubing all the way up onto the straw. Then you use your other stick, whatever it's like chopstick or whatever, take the pointy end, put it right there at the end of the straw inside of it, it'll start to push in the fabric a little bit. So if you had a bigger straw, this would be so much easier because then your chopstick would go all the way through and it would pull the fabric through with it, if that makes sense. But because this isn't big enough, I'm kind of having to do a little bit of a workaround. So I am just gonna take the fabric and start to push it up 
over the chopstick. I'm kind of just basically going backwards with everything. And you just kind of have to take your time with this. It does require a little patience, which I have zero of, so that's why I'm so annoyed by this process. But otherwise, I think it's, it's not hard. It's just, I don't know, a little time consuming, requires patience. Okay, so then you'll start to, you'll have all the fabric now bunched up on the chopstick. You can pull your straw off and then you're just gonna take the fabric and start to work it down the chopstick a little at a time. And you pull it all the way through and you'll have your tube inside out or right side out. And you can use the point of the chopstick now to kind of get that square edging of the fabric to like point out all the little corners on it. And now all you do, take chopstick out and you're ready to, you're ready to iron it down, flatten it out. And I probably will go all the way around then with a, all right, eighth inch seam allowance and just go all the way around the edges and then close this side up. So I'm gonna do that for all of these, get these sewn, come back and then we're ready to start on the main portion. Jesus, this has taken me a million years. I love sewing, but I'm so not patient. I don't know how that makes sense together, but it does, so let's get going. <laughs> Eyes are done, sweet lord. I'm too impatient for this. <laughs> I think the project itself is not difficult. It's the whole filming it while I'm doing it and making sure I'm giving you guys a good angle so you can actually see what's happening. So I think once I try this again on my own without filming, it'll be much more peaceful. <laughs> but all this is all in good fun because I know a lot of you guys probably would wanna try something like this. And so I think it's fun if I can share my experience with you and hopefully give you some tips on what to do, what not to do. I'm sure there are many what not to do's. I'm not a professional seamstress, friends. I just am somebody who likes to sew. Sometimes does it okay. <laughs> all right, so what we're gonna do now, all of the ties are done, yeah. What are you gonna do now? Take our front fabric, so whatever your front fabric is, and then the ties for the neck, you're gonna attach here, so you're gonna attach them to the actual correct side, the actual right side, as it's called in sewing. So you're gonna do right here on the corner of the top, and then for the back ties, they're gonna be right at this angle here. So it'll start to go here. I think whenever I, I, I'm going to use this to make a pattern of my own. By the way, if you're trying to make your own pattern, you have say like a dress or something you really like and you wanna try and make a pattern so that you can create another dress in another fabric, just make your own pattern. I've never bought a pattern, which is probably silly and I probably should, but because I don't know all the super fancy sewing lingo sometimes, they confuse me. So I just make my own and I use wrapping paper. It is perfect. You just lay down whatever the item is on the freaking wrapping paper. Give yourself another like half inch, quarter inch extra outside of that pattern, the item, and then you have a pattern that you can use on top of fabric that you want to sew with. I would just make sure obviously it's the same kind of fabric. So if you're trying to recreate a knit dress, make sure it's knit fabric. Otherwise, 
you know, it's not gonna stretch if you use just straight up cotton. Anywho, I think whenever I do this, I will probably, when I redo this on like a different fabric, I might make it more of like a sweetheart or I might make it, I don't know, I might make the, the top shape a little bit different. And then this, this comes around to me. Let me see if I can zoom out. Nope. Okay, so this comes out, out to me just like right here in the middle. I think that'll work. And obviously like this has a, a pattern or a print on it, so I'm not gonna put any pockets, but if this were like a different fabric, like the ones I'm wanting to work with, I 100% will put pockets on the front because I love pockets on aprons. It's, I think it would be super simple to add on. You would just cut out some fabric, fold the edges, hem it, and then sew that little rectangle of fabric onto the front of the apron. I think that that seems pretty straightforward. So I'm not gonna do it on this because again, I don't wanna hide this beautiful design, <laughs> but other ones for sure, that's what I would do. And I think it'd be super easy for you guys to add that on yourself. So now what we gotta do before we sew the lining fabric onto this, you're gonna attach your ties. So I didn't close off this one edge. It was because I knew we were gonna attach it to this and you're not gonna see that edge. So what you'll do, let me let me turn this so you can see everything. Move all my crap out of the way. All right, got my pins. So you're gonna take the little strip we've done, the edge that's unfinished, you're gonna put right here at the edge of the front fabric facing the actual pattern. I'm gonna do that with all four straps because all four straps are the same size. It doesn't matter which ones you put where. I will say I would probably make the waist straps a bit longer. I like to um, tie the waist straps in the front. That's just a personal preference, how I did it when I worked at the restaurant and it's just how, I don't know, I'm so used to wearing aprons. I, it's just easier for me to tie in the front as well. So I will probably, on the next ones I make, make these like twice as long for the sides, just so there's plenty, plenty of fabric in which to tie. Unfinished edge against the actual pattern. Okay, it says to base the edges. I don't have any basting tape and I'm just honestly just going to go ahead and sew it on this side of it. Then we will put our lined fabric facing towards this. So let's say you were doing, you know, just another, I don't know. So you had ghost fabric here and then you wanted just a plain black. You would put this facing the actual ghost print. The inside would be the unfinished side. So you put essentially right sides together. Then we're gonna sew all the way around. Leave probably about, uh, I think we do it at the bottom, leave about like six inches or so unhemmed. So that way you can turn the fabric inside out. Let's get to it. Thank you. 
All right, so we got it all sewn and then I got it turned right side out. So what I'm gonna do now, the opening that I use to turn it inside out, I'm just gonna fold over those edges, probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe even a little bit more. And then I'm gonna sew on the top edge, probably an eighth inch seam allowance, and then go all the way around the entire thing. So that way it just kind of flattens down those edges. I think I'm actually even going to, I'm gonna iron this first, just to make sure those are nice and crisp. And I'm eighth inch seam allowance, so all the way around the entire thing. And then my friends, we will be done. Ta-da! So here is the finished apron. I really, really like it. It's a little wide for me personally, but I think it'll work. I, if I want to use this as a template for more, I might make it a little bit more narrow, but I think it's it would work better for kind of something a little bit larger. I'm pretty short, fairly, fairly petite. That's why things just fit a little bit wonky on me. But I really, oh my gosh, just the print. It's so cute, this black hat. Um, it does tie right behind, so I think it fits really well. The one thing I think I would change on this, or what I might do, let me make it a better angle. One thing I would change on this, or make it better for future aprons, is instead of having this as a tie, I would probably, on the end of one of them, maybe put one of those like D-rings, so that you could do it as like a loop, and make it like an adjustable strap, and you don't have to tie it behind you, if that makes sense. I think I would also add pockets. I'm someone that really, really loves and appreciate pockets and aprons. You can stuff, I don't know, a recipe down in there, or a, a pen if you need to make any notes or anything on recipes. Sometimes I like to put scissors in there or just whatever you might need whenever you're cooking. Sometimes it's just nice. Or also, like a little strap. You can sometimes just add a little extra strap to be able to hook a towel onto it. That's really, really nice for cooking. You can like, you know, wipe your hands off really, really quick and just keep a towel on you. I know when I worked in restaurants, that's exactly what I did for baking. And it was, it was really, really helpful. I loved being able to do that. I think I would also, you can't see now, but the straps that go around the back, I think would also make them longer. Cause I personally prefer to wrap around and tie it in the front. So if you can see, I just have it tied right here. Whereas like, if it was a little bit longer, yeah, these are too short. If it was a little bit longer, I could bring it around and tie it in the front. That's my personal preference. So then if even if you didn't want to add an extra little strap to hold a towel, you could just loop it right into your apron tie. So just a little something in case there is something you're wanting to follow. I don't really have too much of a pattern to share. I would say if you have an apron you like already, like shape-wise, size-wise, just use that as a template. That's what I do for so much thing, especially like if I'm sewing dresses, I just find a dress that I like and then I find material that's very similar to that so I know it'll move and stretch in the same ways. And then just use your current item as a little template. I use, I think I showed it in the video, I use wrapping paper to make templates and just keep those pieces of wrapping paper available and whenever you're wanting to make a new dress or new apron or whatever, just have that available, do it right onto the fabric, cut it, sew it together, boom, you're good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this is a little bit different. Hopefully all the angles in the sewing were easy to follow. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'm happy to try and explain things best that I can. Uh, I'm not a professional seamstress or anything. I just really enjoy sewing and crafting. So um, I tried to show you guys the process best I can. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a big old thumbs up. If you aren't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell so you're notified every single time I upload. I do try to do at least two videos a week, sometimes a third if I have enough things I want to show you guys that week, but definitely always two videos. So you definitely don't want to miss out on anything. Thank you again to Lisa for the fabric. I really appreciate it. This was so freaking cute. I don't know if I think I showed, but the inside of the fabric, I just used black standard broadcloth as my lining fabric. So you don't have to use anything special, especially if you're getting a nice print. 
I would just use like a plain solid as your interior one. That way you're not using expensive print fabric on the inside. Hopefully, I don't know if I mentioned that while I was sewing, but if I didn't, that's a great tip to help save you money when you're doing projects. Your lining fabric can just be a solid, something a little bit cheaper, so you're not, you know, spending more on a project than it would be to just buy it yourself. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Thank you guys again for all your love and support. I always really do appreciate it. I hope you're doing wonderful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!